I love to have flowers indoors. I love my flowers in my garden, but I also like to cut them and bring them inside. Today, I'm with Jay Schwanke uh, from Jay Schwanke's Life in Bloom, uh, which also airs on public television. And he's going to show us some tips and tricks to creating beautiful flower arrangements. Absolutely. I think that sometimes people get intimidated. And when yes. they think about flowers, they're like, oh, I, I really want to buy them or I want to bring them in the house. Sure. But I want to make sure that I don't make a mistake. Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to make people feel more comfortable. And the, the art of actually arranging flowers helps reduce stress for us. Yeah. Um, being surrounded by flowers is even more important for us because we have happier thoughts. In the workplace, we're more creative when flowers are around. Seniors who are surrounded by flowers will enlarge their circles of friends and are more apt to seek medical attention for things. If they have, if they have flowers, flowers around. Mm -hmm. So um, there's some very interesting studies done by Rutgers University, Boston University, Northern Florida University, have been doing research over the years about how flowers help people. Interesting fact, if you're sick and you get flowers, you get better faster. Mm -hmm. If you get yellow flowers, you'll get better faster still. So I think it's that powerful for us to have a few flowers around the house. Houses without flowers that have less arguments. That's a great start. Okay. And there you go. So, <laughs> right, right, right. That's so, a reason to have flowers around all the time. Exactly. <laughs> so one of the things that I think about is when we have flowers, we may get a bundle. I love creating a bundle of flowers. The thing that I do is I, I usually try and think of a story that mm -hmm. goes along with them. Um, I've been working on these. Is, this is one of uh, the bouquets that uh, is in a line that I'm designing, mm -hmm. but it's called Hidden Garden. Okay. And the reason that it's called Hidden Garden is the colors and the flowers in it remind me of when I was a little kid. Okay. And I grew up in a greenhouse family, and our family, we had seven acres of greenhouses. Oh, wow. And I could walk through the rose house, through the carnation house, where we grew the hydrangeas. And I so had. So you were growing greenhouse grown cut flower crops. Cut flower crops. Yeah, not potted plants. Both. We both. did both. Okay. We did bedding plants too. All so right. we, we had we had success with all of those. And the cool part about it was when I had those flowers at any point in time, even in winter in Nebraska, I could walk through those hidden gardens, yeah. uh, hidden hidden meadows every day. And in our uh, we were on a four four city blocks and there was no road that went through. Mm -hmm. And in the middle was an acre of property. And that's where we grew our gladiolus and our delphinium away from the street view. Mm -hmm. So it was part of that hidden meadow that I could right. sneak into. So I like to think about that and have a story behind the arrangement that I'm gonna make. Mm -hmm. Now the other thing, so when we start to look at this and we think, okay, what's gonna happen here, you know? This is not gonna work, right? So I'm gonna have yes. to do something. Short container. Right, right. I also love that there are people who make these green bouquets, and you'll see them at flower sellers right. all around the country. And the thing about a green bouquet is it provides structure. Mm -hmm. So what I can do is I'm gonna take and make a short cut on this green stem because I have a short base. And I'm gonna drop that bunch inside In there. there. So this is something that you could pick up at uh, any floral place that's open to the public or Absolutely. even at your grocery store. Certainly. Or we could go out into the garden and, and we could grab a few stems of whatever foliage. Yeah. I, I love hostas. I have. Uh, I have too many hostas, maybe mm -hmm. 600. Okay. Oh my gosh. I know. At, Every, wherever there's a space, I plant one. But okay. with that many, you can go out and rob a few leaves here and there. I and rob more than a few. Not okay. notice. <laughs> right. So I will add those. I'll bring in some fern. I'll use my viburnum. I'll cut pieces off of trees. Mm -hmm. And I can create that structure inside that vase. Right. So now, you know, I think when we think about it, you know, you sometimes think about the foam, mm -hmm. the flower foam that we have. Well, this is very similar. We have a structure inside this container that will allow us to place our flowers in there. So we can then take our other flowers. Now, the other thing that I love, just as a side note, this could be an arrangement. We could stop all, all right on now. Its own, right? All on its own. We yeah, could because just you've stop got with color, foliage. form, texture, all Absolutely, right there. Absolutely. All, the, right? all the elements of design are right there in those leaves. And in those leaves, we're probably going to have an arrangement that's going to last three weeks, right. four weeks. It's well taken care of. We might be able to drop in flowers from the garden and then pull them out when yeah. they expire and drop in a few more. We Even people who like permanent flowers, I suggest that we use the greenery, mm -hmm. the foliage with it, and then we have, we have something like that. 
So um, it's a great background for them. So the shorter cut that I make on these stems then allows it to go down inside. And I think that that's one of the things that people think about too. Now the other thing I like to do in my bouquet is you'll notice I used those two here I used this one here. Yeah. I didn't larger make masses of flowers. Yeah, I, that um, my grandma used to call it the polka dot effect. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're making a polka dot arrangement. <laughs> so I try not to think about it being a polka dot arrangement. Mm -hmm. I try and think about the flowers being grouped in different places. And by putting them together and gathering them together, it reinforces their shape and their form and it allows them to be more more uh, attention grabbing. Right, and you get it. to appreciate each Absolutely. type of flower a little bit more right, rather than right, having right. just a mixture of things. That it's it's uh, the same kind of concept in garden design which I spent most of my career Absolutely. doing. You know, it's um, if you have one of everything, your eye never knows where to stop. Exactly. It gets very busy and, and your eye just kind of bounces here. Whereas if you design gardens in bigger masses, as we all know, uh -huh. Your eye is going to follow more, and it's the same concept uh, in flower arranging. Um, I think it's fascinating, though, because I, you know, people tell me that I make flower arranging look easy. You make garden design look easy. <laughs> well, thank you. And I, I always try and figure out, you know, now what? How come that is so? Why, it shouldn't be different. It shouldn't be that different. But it is different for me. But I'm, I'm always amazed when I see someone that has that skill and that talent. So we're adding these now. I think the other thing that I love, I love carnations. But the fact that we have such unusual different tones now right. and different colors. I have so many people who ask me many times, they'll say, now what is that flower? Is that a peony? Exactly. And I'm like, uh, no, carnation. Carnation. But okay. In all of our flowers, carnations, roses, everything, so much advancement in breeding over the last, I mean, when I was a little boy, my, right. there was a place where my mother used to drop me off when she would go grocery shopping and I'd want, they did the same kind of thing your family right. did, growing cut flowers. And I would wander through and there was a house that was nothing but carnations that they used. But they were pink, they were yellow, they were red, they right. were white. And once in a while you'd get a fancy one that had a little edge of some mm -hmm. kind. But today we have these beautiful, oh, amazing tones and colors. So um, in talking about that, yeah. this is Scoop Scabiosa. Mm -hmm. So Scabiosa is relatively a fragile flower. Right. But the company that has bred this has made this Scoop Scabiosa and these will last 10 to 14 days. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. And they call them Scoop because they look like this a scoop of ice cream. I, okay. okay. So yeah. There you go. So I like that. And so typically I'll go in with those last because that's gonna make a little statement and you'll notice that I kind of bring it into the center of the bouquet because we have a little bit of a focal area that's gonna happen inside there. And you know what? If I don't like something where I put it the first time, I can Just always it switch it around. It somewhere else. Nothing's gonna happen to yeah. us if we do that. Right. So yeah, so a simple arrangement like that can be easy and I encourage everyone to do it. A, let your children assist you in doing this. Children arranging flowers, this is a safe way for them to cut. They don't need a knife. They can cut with a bypass cutter. Guys, guys should make bouquets and give them to their wives and make the statement that, I made this for you in the garage and I'm bringing it to you. And <laughs> here you know, it is. Chances are you might get pie or something right. like that. I think, you know, there's, there's that type of thing. Yeah. So I think people shouldn't be afraid of it and that flowers can be very forgiving and it can be fun for us. Well, to and something. that there's no right way or wrong way. Absolutely. If you're happy with it at the end, I say the same thing about gardens all the time. If it brings you joy, right. then you've done it well. Absolutely. So. We are on the same page. The, the thing I always say is, the person that this should please first is you. Is you. And that's wonderful. Absolutely. Well, good. Thank you for thank you for allowing me to come and share. Thank you for, for being flowers, here so. with us. And again, Jay Schwanke's Life in Bloom. Absolutely. Uh, is your PBS show. You're also on YouTube. Um, I have a Jay Schwanke channel on YouTube. Yes. And then I also have a I have a website called YouBloom.com, and we have the PBS player there too. Okay. So you can watch the show if it's not airing in your local in area. Your you local can watch area. it there on the PBS player. So. And it does air on our local station in Nashville, but uh, across the state, you should check your local listings and see where you can find uh, Jay and Jay Schwanke's Life in Bloom. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.